We now study the position vector. The position vector is the vector that defines the location of a particle with respect to an to a coordinate axis. And I will talk more about this in a minute. A position vector and the position of an object to say where something is has no meaning unless you tell us where your coordinate axis is. The symbol for the position vector is R with an arrow over it and its units are meters. Now it is useful to be able to draw a position vector and so here I have a ball and I'm going to start with the coordinate axis. There's my x, there's my y. If you start at the origin and draw a vector straight to the ball, let me put my little arrow here, then that defines the position and is the position vector for that ball. Now, I also could describe this in terms of its y coordinate and its x coordinate, or in terms of the hypotenuse and this angle theta. And you can see where trigonometry is going to get involved in this. We could write this as r is equal to some distance x along the positive x direction plus some distance y in the y direction. This right here is called the x coordinate just like it is for any other vector. This right there is called the y coordinate I hat is a unit vector that points in the positive x direction as we discussed previously with vectors and j hat is a unit vector points in plus y direction. The x-coordinate can be positive as it would be in this case since I'm in the first quadrant but it also could be negative for instance if the ball was located over here somewhere. Same thing is true about the y-coordinate. The units, the meters, will be contained inside the coordinates not in the unit vectors. Unit vectors have no units. Let's draw us an example of one where we could write this in Cartesian form we might for example have one that looks like 3 meters I hat plus 4 meters J hat and if this was the case let me go up and change my pen here then this would be 3 meters this would be 4 meters and in fact we now know that this side here would be 5 meters and in fact we could find that this is the inverse tangent of 4 meters over 3 meters. Meters cancel. Notice anytime you take the inverse tangent to find an angle there shouldn't be any units inside the trig function. 4 thirds which is the tangent should not have units. If you do you made a mistake. So this is just an example. There's nothing special about these vectors compared to other vectors. They're just vectors that describe the location of an object. Now this brings up an interesting question. If one person attempts to measure the location of a ball and write its position vector, say that's Tom, 
and another person, say Sue, attempts to write the location of a ball, would they both agree with the same position vector? Well, it turns out the position vector is not unique. So they do not have to agree, as it depends on your arbitrary choice of the coordinate axis. So let me give it as an example of that. Let me set up a coordinate system. There's one. And let me set up an, an x-axis here. And let me go and set up an axis for Sue. Maybe her axis looks like this. This is her x. And let's let this be her y. And then let's um, put a ball somewhere here. Uh, make my ball a little bit bigger. And let's just say that Sue sitting here has some values along x and some values along y there. So this would be like 1, 2, 3 along her x, which I'll call x prime. 1, 2 along her y, which we'll call y prime. But in the case of Tom, he's got his coordinates set up like this. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And maybe in the Y, 2, 3, 4. So this is Tom, X and Y, and this is Sue, located at this origin. Now let's draw their unit vectors. I'm sorry, not unit vectors, position vectors. So the position vector for Sue would start at her origin and go to the ball. And for Tom, it would start at his origin and also go to the ball. So you can see that this little arrow and Sue's arrow are not the same. This arrow and that arrow are not identical. They do not lie over each other. And in fact, we can even write how they differ. Sue's, which I'll call R prime, meaning the position vector R, and instead of writing Sue, mathematically, people do shorthands in physics. The first person, in this case, whichever one you want to call, I called it Tom, has an R with no prime. The second person that you're talking about has the position with a prime. A third person doing a measurement would be R double prime and so forth. But you could read it like, instead of R primed observer, you could read it as the position of the ball seen by Sue. And according to her, she sees it goes one, two, three meters in the X and about, I don't know, a meter and a half along the y. So three meters along the x and about 0 0.5 meters 
along the y. And that would be the only correct answer if asked for the position vector as the ball as seen by Sue. If you're wanting to write the answer of the position vector of the ball as seen by Tom, he says, well, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, looks like 6 meters along his axis along the X. And it looks like it goes about 2 and a half, 1, 2, 3 and a half meters. along J. And I made a mistake a minute ago. This shouldn't have been that. It should have been 1.5 meters. It went up one and about a half. So what Sue sees and what Tom sees are not the same. However, they must be related. And we'll come back and study that in a later thing when we talk about the Galilean transformations. The point is you can't be graded your position vector until you tell us the coordinate axis. Once we know that, then you know exactly what the answer should be. So you must always, in a problem, tell the person reading your paper or your boss, if you're working in the field, what the coordinate axis is that you are using to solve the problem. To show you how the position vector affects the results, I have opened a Logger Pro file here in which I've done some marking of the location of a cart as it moved across the table for doing video analysis. And you can see that right here, the little blue dots, that I've marked the location in various frames as the cart moved along. That data has then been portrayed on a graph and we can move our video down and you can see this was the location of the cart for each one of those points as it moved along and it looks that it's pretty linear like a straight line meaning that it's moving at constant speed. What would have happened had I changed my coordinate axis right here in yellow and moved it around? Well as I move my coordinate axis around you see that the values for x, which is along the y-axis here, that is the distance traveled, right here, the distance traveled, which is along the y, plotted against the time along the x, that as I move this around, that the value for each one of those measurements changes because it's measured relative to a coordinate system. So you had to set the coordinate system before you started measuring the location of the cart. If you change the coordinate system, it changes the location for the position vector of the cart. Notice what it doesn't do though. It doesn't change the shape of the graph. You're just adding or subtracting a constant. Now, it is also possible to rotate the coordinate and call y x and x y and do some other things although that's not rarely done but the point is the coordinate system has to be defined at the very beginning and that's why define we define it at the beginning of our logger pro stuff as well by the way if you were to take and do a fit you'd find that this has the same fit with the same slope regardless of where you move the position vector around it doesn't change the steepness it only moves it up and down as I go along changing what I call x equals zero.